The last time we worked on the Honda ST1300 Pan European, we repaired those pesky leaking forks, flushed out the brake and hydraulic systems, and this time we get into some mild mods for moving and bypassing some emission controls to get more performance out of the bike and make the ST louder than your college roommate's girlfriend after the frat Aloha Gula party and two pictures of daiquiris. So get ready for the most fun you can have with your ST1300 fully clothed on Rod Rides and Wrenches. One of the reoccurring issues I see ST1300 owners complain about is the radiating heat from the big V4 engine. This year in particular, with the obvious effects of climate change and the massive heat waves earlier than ever this season, more riders are choosing to stay in the AC rather than venture out on their STs. Now I've managed to lower the radiant temperature on the ST1300 while running by as much as 100 degrees Celsius, that's 214 Fahrenheit in part with the modifications that we're going to cover right here. This is some significant heat management, and if your last ride on your ST left you feeling hot and sticky in all the wrong places, then I may be able to offer some relief. I've made a companion video to this one where I specifically discuss temperature and how I managed to cool down the ST, so after watching this video you can click on over to that one for the whole setup. But first, a revisit on a popular topic. One of the most watched videos on my channel discusses the Pulse Secondary Air Injection System found on almost every fuel-injected engine, and especially those with a catalytic converter. The first mod we're going to do on our ST1300 is to bypass this emission system and explain why we're doing it here when I advised against it on the Honda VFR. Plus, we're gonna go a little deeper into how the pair actually works. Pair adds fresh air into the exhaust system through the top of the cylinder heads. A reed valve pulls in fresh air through the pair valve and passes it into the exhaust from your engine. This fresh air helps burn unspent fuel, and not unlike a heroin addict who hasn't touched solid food in months, the injection of air into the exhaust makes your bike leaner, Drugs are bad. making emissions testing a whole lot easier to pass. The fresh air injection by the pair valve also heats up the catalytic converter, which must be over 420 degrees centigrade or 800 Fahrenheit for optimum performance. It does this by continuing the fuel burn process while inside the exhaust system by adding precious oxygen. The pair valve is an electronically controlled valve that by default is in the open position. That's why simply unplugging it or disconnecting the pair electronically doesn't work if you want to bypass it. The pair valve stays open only at low RPM and about 3 or 4,000 RPM the pair shuts off, then preventing fresh air from entering the exhaust. Now I'm going to demonstrate this here as I've installed a long hose onto the pair inlet inside the air box so you can see how it all works. While the engine is running at idle, the vacuum from the pair system is sucking in the paper cloth that's attached to the end of the hose. Once we raise the engine RPM, the vacuum is gradually closed off, and when the pair valve is fully closed, the paper cloth falls off the end of the hose because there's no more vacuum. So the pair system is only sucking at low RPM. But why? As I mentioned earlier, the pair valve is part of the motorcycle's emission systems government emissions testings are typically done at idle or very low RPM, so it's there to assist in the combustion of any residual fuel that is expelled into the exhaust and combusted in the header or when it hits the catalytic converter, provided there's some free oxygen around. The catalytic converter on your motorcycle is designed to do a number of things, but primarily it's there to reduce harmful emissions from the over 150 chemicals fuel refineries add to oil to make unleaded gasoline. To do this, the catalyst works best if it's hot, so a small amount of combustion around the catalyst is okay. If you still have a catalytic converter on your motorcycle, I advise that you do not restrict the airflow through your pair valve. Now, I want to dispel a myth that by bypassing the pair valve, your bike's going to make more power. 
there is no additional horsepower or engine performance to be made when cutting off the airflow to the pair system. No! It does not rob power from your engine. It simply lets some fresh air into the exhaust at low RPM, where even if the pair did steal a pony or two, it's at an engine RPM where you would never miss it. So why do some riders block it off? Well, this is one of those performance voodoo hacks that have more stories surrounding it than facts. In theory, with the catalyst removed, you could potentially be running your bike leaner or richer than it needs to be at idle or very low RPM. The job of the engine's oxygen sensor located in the motorcycle's exhaust system is to send data about how much available oxygen there is in the exhaust to the engine control module or computer. And with that data, the ECM adjusts the air to fuel ratio at intake. Most motorcycles only have one O2 sensor, so data is limited to just one sampling. Cars often have an O2 sensor at the exhaust manifold right after combustion, and then the other after the catalytic converter. If the sample has artificially added oxygen from the pair, then you could speculate the O2 sensor has been fed an inaccurate sample with the additional air from that pair system sending this inaccuracy onto the ECM and then affecting the idle mixture. Honda describes the fuel injection system on the ST1300 as a lean system. This is part and parcel to the use of the pair control solenoid. As a part of a bigger heat management picture, I'm going to do an experiment and block off that pair system in the Honda ST1300 Pan-European to see if it makes any noticeable difference. I suspect it may help in allowing the idle to run richer and then lower the exhaust gas temperature when the bike is standing still. This would be important when you're sitting at a red light or in stop and go traffic. To bypass the pair, I fabricated a plug to go into the airbox with some plastic and a piece of the tube that I used earlier in our demonstration. A word of warning here, make sure that your pair plug is secure. You don't want it coming loose and getting into the intake. So I'm using an adhesive, specifically some grip glue contact cement, to secure the pair plug in place in the airbox. Now the only reason I can consider blocking this system is because we are removing the catalytic converters on this ST1300, which are located in the mufflers. But more on that in a few minutes. Before we get to our next performance mod on our ST, I wanted to make sure you're getting all the support and information I can offer through rod rides and wrenches. Please do me a favor and be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because your likes and subs are very important to me personally. You can do it! While we're in the airbox, it seems like an opportune time to get rid of these intake funnels that attach to the individual manifold ports. For lack of an official term, these funnels or venturi snorkels do nothing except restrict airflow to the engine. In theory, I suppose, they're there to keep dirt, dust, or great big bugs that somehow make it past the air filter and into the airbox from being sucked into the engine. This is a pretty unlikely scenario, as is drowning the airbox in the rain uh, to the point where you would need these snorkels to keep the air intake out of the water. In reality, by restricting airflow, they quieten down the noise from the intake and make the bike a little bit more civil around sleeping babies and old ladies. Since we're going to go for performance over noise, we'll make the conscious choice to remove these four rubber tubes by bending the bracket out of the way to gain access to the screws that hold them in place. This is a quick and easy mod that when combined with the K&N air filter, should let the ST's engine breathe a whole lot better. While we're on the topic of air filters, I really don't believe that the K&N air filter adds that much to engine performance. I do put them in in all my motorcycles for the sake of convenience. Being able to clean the element and oil it myself when it comes time to servicing the filter is the goal and not having to purchase a replacement filter every time I have the fuel tank up, I can service the filter more often, which is the real performance gain here since a dirty filter regardless of who makes it, flows less air. Now I've never had a failure with a Canon filter and I have literally used them 
on three dozen various motorcycles over the years. The next minor mod is to wrap the headers with some one inch design engineering exhaust wrap. Why would we wrap the exhaust headers? Well, guys that live their life one quarter mile at a time. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. They'll tell you that wrapping the exhaust header helps exhaust flow more quickly through it to the collector and then out the muffler. Now, I have no idea if this is true. Probably not. Uh, if it is, the difference would be minuscule and probably not result in an increase in engine performance per se. What header wrap does do is help control engine bay temperatures, and I suspect it will do the same inside the fairings of our ST1300. The V4 engine produces a lot of heat directly in front of your legs and under the engine cylinder heads. The engine area also has a few sensors and wires that run very close to the exhaust, plus plastic fairings that can always use some extra protection. The ST has a wide open space around the bottom of the engine to let air in, but really not a whole lot of venting to let air out of the bike. The air buffets against the engine and doesn't circulate fresh air to the top of the engine the way you would on most other motorcycles. This is because the engine itself is this big flying V brick with no air traveling over the top or directly behind it. The fairing design and the primary fuel tank which is located under the seat being the root cause. Most other motorcycles have an open area just ahead of the swing arm where air can circulate around the back of the engine. We don't have that on the ST. By lowering the heat emissions off the headers, we can reduce fatigue on electrical components and sensors that are running near that exhaust system and keep our secondary fuel tank and airbox cooler while sitting in traffic. As a byproduct, not as much heat is being directed back towards the rider. I go into full detail on the companion video on how much of a difference this mod makes, so be sure to check that one out right after this video finishes. The final mod involves replacing the stock mufflers with some Delkevic or Delkevich if you prefer, performance ones. After making all those modifications to the intake side, we now need to improve the flow through the exhausts to realize the true benefit of the work we've already put into the bike. If we improve the air intake without getting rid of the exhaust gases more efficiently, then we're shorting our sales performance. Do aftermarket exhausts increase power? Well, the real answer is probably. Making the exhaust flow cleanly without the disruption through the factory muffler may add a couple of ponies to your bike. Is it going to rip your face off when you hit the throttle? No. The real reason I go aftermarket exhaust is twofold. First one is weight, and the second one is noise. Let's break that first one down, weight. On the Honda ST1300 Pan European, just one factory muffler weighs six kilograms, that's 13.2 pounds. Two of them are around 26 and a half pounds. The Delkelvic muffler comes in at 2.8 kilograms, and this includes the connector pipe and baffle. This is a mere six pounds, two and a half ounces, multiplied by two for our dual exhaust, that's 12 pounds, five ounces. The difference here is 14 pounds, three ounces, or over six and one third kilogram. Maybe 14 pounds doesn't sound like a lot in the scheme of a 600 plus pound bike but every ounce adds up and after we've added a little bit of weight with exhaust header wrap we need to take off as much weight as it makes sense to do. On top of it, the Delkelvic exhaust is probably the least expensive brand name performance muffler package you can buy. I've installed this exhaust on five motorcycles now and have had a great experience with performance and their finish. For less than 500 bucks, if I could have you 14 pounds lighter in under 60 minutes, it would be the hottest diet craze in the country, and I would be a trillionaire eating Kraft dinner with Dijon ketchup and a pet monkey. You always wanted a monkey. The other component for me in changing the exhaust is the sound. Now the ST1300 has a very unique sound, something a little bit reminiscent of a hamster running on a wheel squeaking away. Maybe some people like this trill sound the bike makes when idling. I'm not particularly a fan. I am also a proponent of louder motorcycles. Now I've ridden hundreds of motorcycles and the ones with stock exhaust are the bikes I find more cars and trucks try to merge into in traffic or jump out in front of you while you're cruising through the parking lot. 
Okay, so probably about half of you are saying, well, I don't like noisy bikes. I think loud pipes are obnoxious. Great. Glad to hear it. I just know that louder pipes on motorcycles let drivers of automobiles know you're around them in traffic and prompt them to look for you. Drivers have so much distraction between music streaming, sat-nav, text messages, and calls from their mothers, all in addition to just driving the damn car, of which they can barely do without those other distractions. As a motorcyclist, not only are you thinking about and reacting to the slightest movement of these cars around you, you must compete for your space on the road and your personal safety. Now combine this with the fact that you are a third to a quarter of the size visually that most automobile drivers are used to dealing with. You use multiple sides of the traveling lane and can accelerate or brake quicker than most of the other automobiles on the road. A motorcycle that is loud enough to be heard by most motorists around you is one more layer of defense you can deploy when you're riding. So to see how loud we can make our ST1300, I picked up a decibel meter to measure the difference in the exhaust note coming off the bike. I set up this experiment with the bike parked in the garage on the lift at ground level, so about three inches off the ground as it would normally sit. I placed a step ladder behind the motorcycle at a distance of six feet. That's where I placed the decibel meter. So basically the decibel meter is six feet away from the end of the mufflers at roughly the same height. First, the reading out of our stock exhaust. The quietest ambient reading I could get before starting the bike with no traffic in the neighborhood, no dogs barking, kids running around screaming, was 38 decibels. Now this is about the same amount of noise your refrigerator makes when the compressor is running. Next I started the bike and let it idle. Our decibel meter shot up to 83.6. So to clarify here, the noise of the stock bike idling is 250 times greater than when it was shut off. We revved the bike to 5000 RPM. Now this number was picked because it's unlikely you'd be revving your bike higher than this in your own neighborhood or street or in a parking lot unless you were doing so with purpose. At 5000 RPM the stock exhaust produced a peak of 95.2 decibels or roughly 10 times the noise the bike made when it was just idling. 95 decibels is about the same amount of noise that you would hear from a gas-powered lawnmower or that a busy city street would make with lots of traffic. Now I installed the Del Kevic exhaust with the baffles left in. Started the bike and let it idle. The decibel reading on the new mufflers was 85.1 at idle. Now before you jump to the conclusion that a couple of decibels is nothing, I want to point out that measuring sound is logarithmic in scale. So by raising as little as three decibels, we have doubled the sound energy and created twice the noise level. When we take the bike to 5000 RPM, this time the decibel meter peaks at 99.4 or roughly two and a half times the noise that the stock exhaust made at that same 5000 RPM. So the bike is definitely louder. Not satisfied with the sound yet, I removed both baffles from the Del Calvic mufflers. I will point out that now we're probably violating some noise level bylaws or other some such twaddle. I can also say that I have never run aftermarket exhaust with the baffles still left in place and have yet to be harassed by local law enforcement for making too much noise. Speeding, yeah, I've been pulled over for that, but noise, no. The reality is that if you go to your local coffee joint and rev your engine with loud pipes, expect some unwanted attention. If you fly through your neighborhood in first gear trying to pull wheelies for an hour, expect some disapproving stares and a letter from the HOA. I don't do this so I don't get harassed for having loud exhaust notes. I use my exhaust thunder like a Roman trumpet announces Caesar. Be aware, I'm here and I'm coming through. With the baffles removed, the Del Kelvic exhaust makes a throaty idle at 92.1 decibels. Enough power to feel the sound energy around the bike. At 5000 RPM, however, not a whole lot has changed at just 102.6 decibels, or roughly double the noise the bike made with the baffles in, and seven and a half times the noise RST made with the stock exhaust. To put our 103 decibels in perspective, 
This is the equivalent to the noise a jet airplane makes when it flies over your house at 100 feet in the air. But this is still nowhere near the sound energy that most people listen to music at, especially while they're sitting in their automobiles. Being a baffles out kind of guy, I like hearing the bike when I kick down to pass a car on the highway or throttle up to speed when merging from an on-ramp. So by increasing the amount of sound the ST makes, I appreciate the bike more and feel safer knowing it's likely traffic around me will hear me before they see me. So what's your take on a louder motorcycle exhaust? Are you pro, con, libertarian? Put some comments below and voice your opinion. There are no wrong answers here, just the ones that contradict mine. But seriously, go ahead and share, I promise I won't hold it against you. And be sure to check out the companion video on heat management on our ST1300 Pan European coming up next. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and be sure to ride safe.